Katie Watford, and I'm super excited today because we are getting ready to interview a lovely client of mine. This woman is vivacious to the definition. She's just got this uber personality. I have adored her since the moment I met her, and I cannot wait for you guys to hear her story because I think she can relate to a lot of other women that come from exactly where she's at. And we're just going to jump into it. So I am more than excited to introduce to you guys, Miss Lizetta Robertson. So excited. <laughs> Lizetta, welcome. Thank you for joining in with us. You're welcome. It's my problem. I'm excited to be here. Okay. So let's just talk about you for a second. Let's let them get to know you. How, um, tell, tell them a little bit about you, what you do, and why you reached out to me. Okay, um, so I'm a real estate agent here in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I am a mom of three crazy kids, uh, 13, nine, and seven right now. And um, I reached out to Katie because I got my license about two years ago. And I had started in the industry and I'm like, I have got to get my look together because I came straight out of quarantine with COVID. So sweatshirts, jeans, t-shirts was, tennis shoes was my look. So I was like, I cannot, I cannot carry on like this because I knew that I wanted to present myself in a professional way, but I needed to do it more than just like, my branding pictures. I needed to be able to go out and show a house mm. and look casual, but look professional and presentable at the same time. And I couldn't pull it together. So, um, of course, good friend of mine, uh, Johanna Desir, she was like, we went on a shopping trip. She's like, you have to get with Katie. Katie will help you out. She showed me all the things that I need to do to get, you know, be fashion forward and not necessarily have to spend a whole lot of money, not to be too trendy. Like she will help you put out this together. You need this. And so I finally, so that was in February. And then I believe it's October. I really invested in Katie. I was like, okay, I got to do this. I'm going to have to get it together. I cannot, I've tried on my own. <laughs> it is not working. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need some help. So Katie has really, really helped me on this journey. Okay. Okay. So let's kind of continue it from there. And so you came into this, you reached out to me and were you nervous? Did you have any apprehensions at all? Some women do. So that's why I like to talk about it that at stage, because you were referred from a dear friend who you love and yes. respect. And you also looked up to Johanna in terms yes. of how she dressed, right? And you were wanting her to kind of teach you the ways. Right. And then she said, you got to meet Katie. And so yeah. did you have any apprehensions even still because you still look up to say how Johanna presents herself? Was there anything, any reservations going into it? If there was, it was really small because I love the way Johanna presents herself with the confidence and everything else. And so I was ready. I, oh. I had already started the process of cleaning out my closet, getting rid of stuff. Um, just literally purging of unnecessary stuff. So when I came in, I'm like, tell me what to do. Like, <laughs> You had a wonderful attitude. I'll say if there's any key piece, it's not a big budget that a woman needs. It's you have to have the right mindset and attitude. It's like, just help me figure this out. You mentioned something all throughout this for a long time that kept coming up. And then it changed once we really wrapped up your overall package that we're in. You kept saying, I know how to do this, but I can't figure it out for me now after COVID. And you kept bringing that up. And then one day later, you said, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> so what was, what was, what was oh. one of the biggest, go, go ahead. You got something no, to say? No, no. Um, so for me, it was because I graduated college, had a fashion merchandising um, minor. Um, I worked in retail, clothing retail for so long. And I just, I loved Vogue. I love fashion stuff. I followed it. I make up, I do myself. I would follow beauty bloggers and stuff like that to kind of figure out, you know, look that I wanted. And 
the older that I got, I kept feeling like I can't look like these 20 something year olds because that's not me. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it, I kept reverting back to what I was used to doing 10, 15 years ago, which is not, it was not. So when I would go shopping for myself, it was overwhelming. Like I didn't want to do it. Um, I, I absolutely hated it. So I would do online shopping if I could. I was getting stuff from Target. Not that Target is a bad thing. I'm, I love me some Target. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't have I didn't have a concept of my body. I didn't have a concept of the look that I was trying to achieve. I didn't have a concept of actually putting outfits together at all. So honestly, I really feel like for me, like all that brain power that I used to have to focus on beauty and fashion was focused on bills, kids, work, <laughs> like everything else. And so it was gone. And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, you know, I love me some Star Wars. I walk out of here with my skinny jeans on, Star Wars t-shirt and a sweatshirt on top of it and some tennis shoes. And, you know, I didn't, I can't show a house looking like that. Like I just, I wanted people to take me seriously and treat me as a professional. And so there was no way that that was gonna happen in that outfit. <laughs> so we, um, let's kind of talk about a little behind the scenes, us working together through month one and month two. So month one was when we started to outline your vibe and create mm -hmm. a style blueprint and give you the roadmap. And how was a, that process for you, or what was the biggest takeaway from that section that we did? The biggest takeaway for me was that it was very internal. It was me looking at myself internally, like where I was, what I wanted, how I wanted myself to be perceived. Um, the homework was, it was a little tough, you know, trying to figure out exactly where I wanted and where I wanted to be. Um, and getting over the idea of what if people think that I'm overdressing or I look a certain way and I'm being too much and learning to put that out of my head and being like, okay, if this is the way you want to look and you want to look good, don't be afraid of doing that in a world of sweatshirts and sweatpants and tennis shoes. So that was the first hurdle. And that was a big hurdle to get across because that was me. And that was the way that I was dressing. I was dressing the way that the moms at my kids' school dressed when they picked them up. Um, dance moms dropping off girls, you know, at the studio. I was dressing that way. And I wanted something more. And I knew that if I wanted something more, I was going to have to tell my brain, like, okay, yes, you want to reach for that, but we're not going to today. <laughs> This is such a huge one, Lizette. I'm so glad you brought this up because this is something that comes up a lot that if I dress better, I appear to be full of myself, right? There's this misconception that for some reason I've just noticed from women. And thank you for saying that because um, it is something where we have to discuss it or do a coaching call about it because it doesn't mean that you're full of yourself because you took the time to get yourself dressed and ready for the day. But this is something that is in certain women's minds because they're worried about what other people are going to think or say. Right. And, um, and okay, so you got over that hurdle. And oh, yeah. was that like the breakthrough for you or was that just the breakthrough that you could start to then start to see how this new woman, this new identity that we were pre wanting to create, was that that allowed you to kind of start to see, feel and go down this this path to start to figure out all these specificnesses that we needed to do? Yes, because it, I had to break down that wall so I could do something different. Mm. Because if I hadn't Amen, done that, <laughs> Amen, like, honey, good job. I would have rejected everything that you sent me. I mm -hmm. would have came up with an excuse of, okay, I bought it. But now, you know, it's just going to sit in my closet. And I'm not going to wear it, which is dumb. Um, I can't, 
I can't make a change if I don't push my stuff to do something uncomfortable or different or different than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was, and then just trust, honestly, just t trusting the process, like it's going to come together. And it's so funny because I attribute it to doing makeup because makeup in itself looks crazy in the process of doing it. And, you know, I even tell some of my clients that I do makeup for, I'm like, please trust me in this process. It looks crazy right now, but I promise you when it's over, you'll be beautiful. You'll love it. But I mean, you got to go through the ugliness of all the process to get to the beauty. So the process of breaking down those walls, like, okay, you're not going to be out here caring about what other people think. You're going to try out this outfit. And if you get compliments, great. If not, if you feel good about yourself, that's a, that's a plus. <laughs> so, <laughs> Do you right. ever feel like I was trying to put you in something that didn't represent who you wanted to be? Did you feel like I, because some women think I'm going to, oh, what if she doesn't get me and she's going to put me in something that I don't like? And so, you know, that's why we spent mm -hmm. so much time outlining the vibe. And that's right. Uh, but, but did you ever feel like there was anything presented to you at the, when we looked at shopping items, when you put outfits on that didn't capture this woman after that hurdle got brought down? Not really, because I think after we did the, um, the vision board of the different outfits, the stuff that you were putting on there kind of aligned. And so since we agreed on the vision board, I'm like, okay, I see the outfits. I see the outfits. Um, I mean, I think initially probably looking at them, I'm like, I don't know. I've never bought anything like this before. I've never tried on anything like this before. And again, it was like, we, we're doing this and so it was definitely like trusting the process by this get the right size because even after I bought the stuff and it was coming in <laughs> and I was trying the stuff on myself I'm like I don't know like how she's going to put this together but I'm trying to figure out in my mind but again I don't I don't have the brain and I don't have all the tools yet to put the stuff together so it was it was definitely a building block process. And when it all came together, it was, it, it was amazing. Like, I, I have no words. <laughs> you were crying. You were crying. I was. Yeah. I was. Because I hadn't, it was something to see the people that I admired um, dress a certain kind of way. Um, the people that I would look at on Instagram or YouTube or whatever dress a certain way. And to see it on my body, knowing that I wasn't a size two, knowing that I had had three kids and to still look and feel beautiful mm. and professional, like it made me feel good about myself in a way that I hadn't felt good about myself in a very long time. And so it made me appreciate, and even my husband too, like the investment was so well worth it. Like yeah, that be, oh, he, he was super excited oh, yeah. about the outfits. Husbands, <laughs> husbands really get into it. They love it. They always, oh yeah. 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 I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, so he would like call me. He was like, I saw you leave the house through the rain doorbell. I saw what you had. Sir, please, you're doing a little too much. That's good. And how did that make you feel, obviously? Oh, of course it made me feel great. Like my husband is watching me through the rain doorbell, um, leaving the house because of the outfit that I have on. Oh, absolutely. Yes, I felt absolutely great. Yeah. When's the last time that happened? Oh. <laughs> It's been a long, again, the sweatpants and t-shirts was not going to cut it. Um, and he hadn't seen me dress like that and look like even just the makeup, hair, everything just kind of put together in a so. very long time. Yeah. yeah. And so I guess in his mind, seeing the old me and the way that I used to carry myself kind of come back is also a good feeling for him too. Sure. So. Sure. Um, what we were getting ready to start this. So since we're kind of talking about putting together outfits and you did, you had this amazing, gosh, I haven't had someone 
cry tears of joy in a fitting like you did in a way, Lizetta, you cried and kept just saying, oh my God, oh my God, I have no words. That's all you would say is I have no words. And you were crying and you were happy. And we were like putting together the outfits on our virtual appointment. We were putting together um, your lookbook for you. You know, we were doing all this and you were just like on this high. And so then now you get to live and wear these pieces out. Obviously your husband's checking you out through the, the ring. <laughs> That's a good one. That is a good one. My husband checks me out through the ring camera. That's or the, the app or the ring that. camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so how has it been since you now are living this woman being this woman? Um, you just mentioned to me a coat that changed your life. So please, I don't even know what you were getting ready to say. So let me hear it. Okay. So <laughs> yes, like, oh my gosh. So my 13 year old, thinks that I'm like old as dirt. She thinks that I came up in a time where we drove horse and carriages to school type deal. So <laughs> I, we were going to Atlanta for her dance competition. And of course, like I'm driving, it's early in the morning. I don't want to wear like professional wear or anything like that. So I had on, I think some leggings, a sweatshirt, and through the, the green trench coat from Banana Republic on top of that. And she was like, wow, Aww. you look great. And that whole weekend, cause I, I was trying to pack light. So that green trench coat was my coat. Uh -huh. So seeing hundreds of people at the convention center, international convention center there. Like I got so many compliments. I love your jacket. Where did you get that jacket from? I love your coat. And this is meanwhile, while I'm wearing tennis shoes, leggings and a sweatshirt up under it because I'm there at the convention center at least eight hours a day, running in between changing and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to be comfortable, but I still, you know, <laughs> want to be cute. Yes. So I mean, I had that whole weekend, I got so many compliments. I ended up wearing the same jacket again this past weekend in Chattanooga for another competition. And like, it never failed. Like it was something like that whole jacket just brought everything together. So I felt like, okay, I see now, like this is not just, you know, it works. It pulls everything together. It, um, it doesn't make me look as sloppy, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So I felt more of my age. And then I also felt really comfortable, really trendy. It wasn't uncomfortable. I wasn't wearing anything uncomfortable or too tight or anything like that. So it was just, it was great. Oh my gosh. Like people were pulling me aside over this jacket. And I'm like, if you only knew, <laughs> like <laughs> I would not have had this in my closet if it was not for Katie. So that jacket just pulled it all together. Like it was awesome. I was, and I was shocked. I almost texted you. It was like, girl, you, you just don't me. know <laughs> how many comments I'm getting on this jacket. So, but yeah, it was, it was great. I'm so glad. I mean, she, right. You guys, uh, just the audience, right. As we were getting ready to start this, she said, this jacket changed my life. And I was like, don't say anything. I want them to hear it. It just like, I hear it. Um, it Mm, yeah, it, that jacket like is a staple. It's a it staple. will. Oh, it's a staple. Yep, yep. And it came from Banana Republic, and I think we may have gotten it for sixty dollars, yes. maybe seventy five. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was sixty dollars right? because we yeah. had gotten it on sale. Um, I think it was right before Christmas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we got a stellar deal. Let's talk about that real quick because there's always this misconception. Uh, this is going to cost me an arm and a leg. And it depends on what your budget is. And I have a right. big range of clients who want to do certain things. But you did mention at one point, like, Katie, these prices on these clothes, you know, so talk about not necessarily specifically how things individually price, but just your takeaway of how you can still make this affordable and look spectacular like talk about that kind of opening up into that world yeah so
So I am definitely like shop on a budget type chick. So <laughs> I'm looking for a coupon code. I have honey on my computer so yeah. it can find coupon codes for me. So yeah, but I'm also a stickler fashion merchandising on quality. So yeah. I am checking fabric content and all that kind of stuff. I want to make sure it's going to be structured and it's going to last me a while. So I was like, okay, she's she's sending me stuff from Zara. I'm like, I've heard of Zara. I've never really shopped Zara. And so, and everything just started coming in. And I'm like, what is this? Like, I've never, I don't, it wasn't, that was a thing. It wasn't trendy. That's what it was. It wasn't trendy. And so I'm looking at key pieces that were not trendy, that were, it's not what you would see on the front page of each of these websites at all. And then there was some stuff like, for example, there was this black skirt that she had me, she, it was like an A-line black skirt and it, it was, was a like a skirt that had an asymmetrical hem of it I know exactly yes. what you're talking about yeah and it was like 25 dollars and I was like does she know that this thing is 25 I'm like oh lord so she I get the skirt I get it home I put it on and I'm like okay I I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this like this skirt looks and feels like and I don't want to try it on with the right things that's what it was the next day when we do the fitting, she's like, I want you to grab this black skirt. And I'm like, oh, I don't think she knows about the skirt. She see it all. She gonna be like, mm-mm. So she part, pat, partnered it with this shirt. And I have the white blazer with me for that show. Yeah. And this blazer from Zara, right? Mm -hmm. That whole outfit was like to die for. Like I could not, it, in my mind, I could not have put it together. The outfit itself was probably less than $200. And it just blew my mind that all of this stuff looks so professional and looks so great. And then I didn't, I just have to spin the arm and the leg. Like I, I was, I was shocked. I'm not going to lie, but that was also the same outfit that I wore because thank you for the outfit, the little lookbook. So we had to take Game pictures. Right? Game yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. We had to take pictures for um, my brokerage and the colors were black, white, and red. So I was like, oh, okay. Let me check my lookbook here and see what we have. <laughs> <laughs> and that outfit worked perfectly. All I had to do was buy the stockings and I was good to go. And I'm like, this has saved my life for so much stuff that I really didn't have to think about, oh my gosh, what am I going to wear? I need to go get this, that, and the other. It was already pieced together. That skirt is awesome and super comfortable. Let me tell you that. <laughs> I wore that skirt all day long. It was great. <laughs> so this process has saved you time, money, and most importantly, it sounds like and you fill in the gaps for me. But what is this? What has been the biggest takeaway? I guess I shouldn't say it for you. You say it. What has been the biggest takeaway of this process for you? The biggest takeaway of this process was I feel like knowing exactly what you're shopping for. Mm -hmm. It has helped me weed through so much stuff that you get bombarded with. And if I have a certain look that I'm trying to look for, it needs to fit in these boxes. And so that keeps me from buying like random stuff and trying to see if I can piece it in. If it doesn't fit with the look, like what are you doing? Mm -hmm. So for me, it has kept me from just doing a lot of nitpicking shopping because that's what I would do. I would just do, oh, I think that's really cute. I like that shirt but I don't have anything for it to go with. I don't have a complete idea of the look or what I'm trying to present. So that has helped a whole lot. Um, that has also helped me with the shoes that I'm looking for, um, what I need in my wardrobe that's going to fit multiple styles instead of like, oh, I like that little red pump. What do you have to go with it? Like. <laughs> 
<laughs> what is the goal of this shoe? So um, that has saved me time. It has saved money because I'm not buying just little nitpicky stuff. It has also kept me from looking hodgepodge too. <laughs> and, and, you know, I look put together and it makes getting the lookbook and making stuff with outfits, it makes getting ready every day easier because I already know in my mind, like, okay, I know these colors to go together. These colors work together. This outfit looks great together. I, I can piece stuff together a lot quicker. So I'm not literally, and that was the thing. I was literally standing in my closet doing this. <laughs> And I'm spending 15 minutes just trying to figure out what I'm going to wear. Yeah. So when I already have ideas of this, 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 and I know it's going to be great. And I have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. it's seconds. It's not even minutes. Right. It's just like, right. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that time, money, <laughs> and looking great, like not looking, going out and looking crazy. So it has saved a lot of that for me. Um. Then anything else do you want to add to share with another woman who may be in your shoes or was in your shoes that you want to say just to, to her? Is there anything like that? Or is there any other thing that you, yeah, anything specifically to I, a woman and her that, and if you were talking to the old you and now the new you, what would you want to say? Yeah. First thing I would probably say is, um, this is a good investment in yourself. This is not necessarily just about what you wear is how you feel about what you're wearing. It's how you feel about yourself. It's the confidence and the self-esteem that you're giving yourself. Um, that translates far beyond what you wear. Other people will feel that. Um, if you're in business, they know that you know what you're talking about. They want to be around somebody who is super self-confident. Um, and I feel like it was a, like a form of therapy in a way because I'm th putting away a lot of stuff that I thought that I had to be as a mother, as a wife, all of these boxes you put yourself in and you think that you can't be. I was able to put all of that away. I can do whatever or be whatever I need to be despite what other people may think of me or say of me, um, that really helped free me, I know. And I feel like for women, we, we get so wrapped up in that, especially when we think, oh, well, she's like super skinny. She's in the size two. She can look like that. I can't look like that. Mm -hmm. No, like, no, everybody deserves to look good and feel good for themselves. Everybody does and everybody can. You just have to have the tools to do it. So it's a good investment, I feel like, for women to do for themselves. Um, I, again, it was great for me. It was like a therapy for me. It was an investment in myself that I needed. Um, and I still need, I'm not even gonna lie, like, She's still offering some classes and I'm still taking them. <laughs> I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it opens the door to so much that I thought I knew that I didn't know. And understanding fashion, understanding my body and how to dress my body. Um, that goes a long way. That goes a long way. Lizetta, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, this was just, uh, your energy is so infectious, you know, it really uh -huh. is. And I love getting a chance to work. I'm always, a. I always love my job. Yes. Because I get to, I, I love it because of the client I get to work with. Mm -hmm. And I'm always looking for somebody that's just doesn't realize that they are a shining star and and then just walk them through some simple steps to show them you are have so much more to offer first and foremost yourself so you can right. give your gifts more to the world and mm -hmm. i knew as soon as we talked on the phone that i was like this is 
this is my tribe. I know my tribe when I'm talking to them. Yes. And um, I'm, it has been such an honor. It's, I, I get a little teary eyed hearing just all these takeaways from, you know, my gifts that God has given me. So um, I, I appreciate you. Uh, you know, I can't, I, I look forward to a day that I get to meet you face to face since we still haven't, okay. you know, had that chance yet, but um, yes. yeah. So I just thank you so much. And um, yeah. No problem. Thank you for all that you do. And thank you for like putting yourself out there. And because I know this is not easy of a business to do, but to put yourself out there, the knowledge that you have, like, thank you for doing that. And I think people sometimes forget, like you always have something to offer, no matter if 15 million people are doing the same thing. There's only one you. And I feel like that connection with us, like it made it a lot easier. And I also feel like you pushed me like, okay, I know this may sound a little uncomfortable, but you, you can do this and I believe in you. And that helped me. And again, like the knowledge base that you have, oh my gosh, like the stuff that you know, and it's not even just the way that you know, it's the way that you present the information, you put it together. It's not intimidating. It's not like, it's not like a devil's wear Prada type situation. It's, oh. It makes you feel like this is for everybody every day. Do not feel like you have to be, you know, New York City fashion week type deal, which I absolutely love. So you brought it right here to Nashville, Tennessee. So. <laughs> Your words are a gift to me. Thank you so much. It's you an are honor. welcome. Thank you. thank you. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed hearing Lizetta's story. Um